The pancreas is a retroperitoneal organ located in the upper abdominal cavity. It transverses across this area and is about 6 to 10 inches long. It has two major functions, the first one being the endocrine function, making up 1 to 3 percent of this function, and deals primarily with releasing hormones that regulate blood sugar levels via the hormones insulin and glucagon. The second major function is the exocrine function, making up 95 percent of this pancreatic glandular tissue and deals primarily with digestive enzymes that it releases into the first part of your small intestines to break foods such as carbs, fats, and proteins. Looking at the pancreatic blood supply, because of its close proximity to the spleen, liver, duodenum, most of the blood supply is originating from the celiac trunk and gives off a lot of collateral circulation via the hepatic artery, splenic artery, and superior mesenteric artery. Looking at a little bit more detailed anatomy of the pancreas, the pancreas is nothing more than an area that includes the unconate area, which is just a part of the area of the pancreas that tucks underneath a head, neck, body, and tail. Now, if we look at the center part of the pancreas, we have a little duct right here that drains into the first part of your small intestines called the duodenum, and this is called the pancreatic duct and a little accessory duct that comes off of that that also drains into the duodenum called the accessory duct. Now this is the duct that is going to drain the digestive enzymes and eventually making their way into the first part of your small intestine to start breaking your food groups down. Now this system also includes a couple of sphincters and one sphincter at the very end called the ampulla of water. This diagram just represents a couple of things that can go wrong with it. Here we have a picture of gallstones located right here in the common bile duct. The close proximity to the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct make this one of the most common causes of pancreatitis, and that is gallstones. Gallstones making their way from the gallbladder via the cystic duct, common hepatic duct, common bile duct, if they get dislodged in this area, what happens is when the food comes down from the stomach into the small intestines, the pancreatic juices are released via the pancreatic duct. But if the duct is blocked, what happens is these enzymes back up into the pancreas and they get released into the pancreatic areas. And what happens is the pancreas starts to auto digest itself. Prior to that, it might start you know, getting inflammatory conditions, severe mid-abdominal pain, you can end up having some pseudocyst that form, but eventually the pancreas may eat itself. Now looking a little bit more detail at the pancreatic duct, we can see a lot of cells come off of the pancreatic duct, inferiorly and superiorly along the duct, and these are called the center cells and making up the exocrine function of the pancreas. And they're going to deal primarily with the digestive enzymes that are going to get released from these center cells into the pancreatic duct and eventually making their way into the duodenum. Now the other function is you see sparingly you have these cluster of blue cells. These are the endocrine cells. These are actually where the hormones are going to get released. This primarily is going to be the isolates of Langerhans and this is going to be releasing the hormone insulin. But there are other few cells that are scattered along here and we'll mention those here in a few seconds. Back to the exocrine function, the three enzymes that the pancreas releases is called the pancreatic amylase, which are primarily going to break down carbohydrates or starches into the sugars that our body cells require for energy. Pancreatic lipases, which are going to break down lipid or fat molecules, and pancreatic proteases, in which there are two types of proteases, trypsin and chymotrypsin, that helps break down or digest proteins. Now there is a little bit of extra juice that's released, and that is bicarbonate. Bicarbonate is also released by the center cells because of the high acidic contents released from the stomach into the first part of your duodenum. The bicarbonate is an alkaline solution that kind of neutralizes this acidity, so you don't eat yourself over here and end up having duodenal ulcers. 
Now coming over to the endocrine side, we have three types of cells, alpha cells, which release the hormone glucagon, which is going to increase sugar levels in the bloodstream. Beta cells, which are right here. These are the islands of Langerhans on a histological picture. They release the hormone insulin, which is primarily going to bring down your sugar levels in the bloodstream. And here's a picture of a histological diagram. And you can see there's some scattered areas right here a little bit lighter than the rest of the histology picture. These are the blue areas in this diagram. These are your islands of Langerhans. And this is the primary area where you're going to have insulin being released. Last cell is called delta cells. These guys, sell, these guys release somatostatin, which is basically your regulator of these two hormones. And it inhibits glucagon and insulin and keeps them in check. So it serves as a homeostatic mechanism for these two hormones.